We're at Ashley Dean. This is the new dairy research farm, which is part of the hub. Land here is part of the new Lincoln hub. And our input to that is eddy flux and very large lysimeters, which you can see at this side here. So we're actually installing these very large lysimeters, two meters in diameter, 1.5 meters deep. So there's about 10 ton in each of these barrels, effectively a soil. Yeah. We always call it soil, but in actual fact, it's, there's a lot of stones. Um, so in terms of why we've you know, used such large lysimeters is that it's important that you contain a, a, a what we call a representative elementary volume of the kind of system that you're using. So in this case, we have stony soils and you have stones from you know this size to this size. So you have to have a big lysimeter to get an even representation of those. We've also um, starting a system that has uh, lucerne plants in it. And lucerne plants have a, a big root volume, big plant root volume, so you need to have a lysimeter that can encompass that and multiple plants within that within the lysimeter. And then thirdly, we're also looking at a grazed system, and so we're wanting to monitor within these lysimeters what's actually happening in the paddock alongside. So one of these lysimeters um, can have areas which are ungrazed and areas which have urine and dung patches on them. So on a, on a typical dairy farm you might have around 20% of a paddock has urine deposited on it on an annual basis. So on these lysimeters um, we will be putting on urine onto 20% of this area which will turn out to be about 3 um, 20 centimetre diameter kind of average size urine patches. And then we can study that whole system of the urine and the non-urine areas and, and, and how that behaves. The real advantages about the experimental setup of, of Ashley Dean is multiple agencies being involved and they specialise uh, specialising in different areas and bringing those resources together and that collaboration, sharing of knowledge and sharing of, of understanding as well. Uh, but also by us doing that we're able to monitor a whole range of uh, processes and, and, and operations within that kind of farm system. These lysimeters, for example, don't normally get associated with eddy covariance towers which are measuring the water and, and, and gas fluxes going out into the atmosphere, whereas here we can observe things from the, you know, from the atmosphere down to the, you know, but below the root zone in, in an integrated kind of system and across multiple um, processes, the carbon, the nitrogen and the water kind of dynamics. So it's a real opportunity to do that integrated kind of multidisciplinary research. We have some of the leakiest soils on the Canterbury Plains that actually Dean. Very shallow, stony soils that the water drains through very easily. A lot of that soil type occurs across the Canterbury Plains, probably nearly 70%. Irrigation, we can grow lots of grass and other crops, but the risk is that because they're leaky, that nitrogen in particular, nitrate leaches out of the soil and goes into rivers, lakes or groundwater. So the work that we're um, developing at Ashley Dean is to find new innovations, new ways to help the farmer to reduce the environmental footprint, the amount of nitrate leaching, the amount of um, nitrous oxide emissions, um, the amount of carbon emissions, and to link together the nitrogen and carbon cycles which affect the availability and therefore the vulnerability of nitrogen being washed out of the soil. Often our science teams have worked uh, exclusively in carbon or in nitrogen and so what we've done here is to bring those two teams of experts together into the one research program to link those critical cycles and therefore try to find some ways that we can reduce the environmental footprint of agriculture. We've chosen to work on the stony soils of Canterbury because that's where most of the conversion to irrigated dairy farming has occurring. But the work that we do will be um, useful for all, all of the dry land eastern areas of New Zealand, which, which spread right up into Hawke's Bay and right down into Southland. Now, stony soils have got a very loose structure, and they just don't have a, a, a natural supply of, in terms of carbon and water holding capacity. And so there is the question of what is the long-term impacts of daring going to be on those systems? So apart from the nitrate leaching, and nitrous oxide emissions of our work, we're very concerned about maintaining the quality of those soils as well. And that's principally around maintaining the soil carbon because soils, soils with higher soil carbon tend to have much more resilient properties to be able to adapt and, and, and be changed to very, very conditions. So if we can reduce nitrate leaching on these stony soils, but at the same time, increase soil carbon, um, then that would have an enormously beneficial effect. The project we're doing is actually trying to understand what drives the turnover of soil organic matter. And if you can, through management, put more carbon into the soil, 
can you stabilize it and keep it there because sequestering soil carbon is a essentially a key mitigation strategy for greenhouse gases globally if you could sequester just 0.1% more carbon in the soil than it has globally um, already you would more than completely offset all the greenhouse gas emissions from human activity.